Now join the BBC's news teams where you are. Bye bye. And welcome to BBC Points West with David Garmston and Alex Lovell. Our main story tonight, the family fighting for answers. Their son died after being given a drug that killed him in hospital. Now they've challenged the coroner's verdict. They are protecting the system, whether that's the coroner, the NHS, local government. The system is protecting itself. We'll hear about new evidence uncovered by the family. Our other headlines this evening. Police say their crackdown on anti-social behaviour in Glastonbury is working. We're out on the beach with the PCSOs to see if local residents agree. Reach for the skies. Rolls-Royce is building the first electric plane to fly at 300 miles an hour. And still in fine voice, the fifth anniversary of the Bristol Military Wives Choir. Good evening. Parents whose son died at Southmead Hospital in Bristol have accused the NHS of a cover-up over his death and one MP is saying it could be corporate manslaughter. 18-year-old Oliver McGowan was given a drug which he was allergic to. Now the family have found new evidence which raises questions over whether his life could have been saved. Our health correspondent Matthew Hill reports. Hello, this is day one of the 22 press-up challenge I've got to do this for 22 days. Thank Oliver you. McGowan was young, fit and healthy, but he was autistic and had a mild learning disability. His care notes said he was allergic to antipsychotics, but he died of an allergic reaction after being given those drugs in Southmead Hospital. I provided um, a yellow folder full of essential medical information, uh, previous reactions to drugs and sensitivities. We were told by another medical person there that evening that um, he had no intention of using antipsychotics. What, what medication has he had today? The drug caused his brain to swell so severely that it came out of the base of his skull. Oliver McGowan never came out of intensive care and died. But at an inquest last year, Coroner Peter Harring found there were no lessons to be learned as there were no failings. But using the Freedom of Information Act, Oliver's parents obtained the first draft of a report carried out by the local clinical commissioning group known as a leader review. It's automatically carried out whenever an adult with learning difficulties dies in hospital. Now they were shocked to discover that it said that his death was potentially avoidable. The second draft said the team doing it disagreed with the coroner, but the final draft didn't tick any of these boxes and simply quoted the coroner's findings. Crucial question, was this an avoidable death? They've just failed to answer. Now we know the answer is yes, but why? Why have they done that? That is a failing and it's an insult to Oliver's memory, to Oliver, to us as parents, and it's an insult to the whole programme. Paula McGowan launched a campaign to train every person in the NHS in learning disabilities and autism so that future deaths could be avoided. Her petition led to a promise and a debate this autumn. I do believe what happened to Oliver is corporate manslaughter, whether it fits in with the law or not. Lessons must be learned. Oliver's death cannot be in vain. In a statement, the clinical commissioning group say their independent review panel refined their responses over time. And the different drafts of the report shared with the family reflect this. But ultimately, given the complexities of Oliver's case, they were not able to conclude whether his death was avoidable or not. Oliver's been kicked in the teeth again. But as a result of this, let's look at the positives. NHS England are going to recall Oliver's leader report. They're going to look at it again. But most importantly, they are going to look at it nationally. Well, that was Matthew's report, and he's here with us now. Matthew, have you seen anything like this before? Um, it's not unusual to have different drafts of a report, but what is unusual is to have a fundamental point, such as, you know, was this death potentially avoidable or not, 
change at the very end when at the very beginning it seems quite clear that there's a, a view that it, that, it, that it was potentially avoidable. Um, so, yeah, it's very difficult for, for the family, uh, obviously. Uh, these leader reports were devised by the University of Bristol and they were implemented by them, but it was the local CCGs who took this over uh, last year in April and, uh, and were in charge of this. Now, unusually, the University of Bristol have released a, a statement to me saying that they're disappointed uh, that the document, documentation for that process had not been completed as, as would be expected and incomplete records have an impact on learning that can be made from individuals' deaths. And they're going to be discussing with NHS England the possibility of making more questions mandatory in the future. And this is just, I mean, it's so awful for the family. As she said, they just feel like he's being kicked in the teeth, don't well, they? Well, I think it's very difficult for them to have closure on this. And so they're putting a lot of store in this final inquiry that NHS England, unusually, are now sort of taking over from, from the local team. OK, well, we'll wait and see. Thank you very much, Matthew.